Hi there, everybody. Chris Schmidt from Grayscale Gorilla, and welcome to the Quick Start for Signal. I'm really excited to show this to you guys, see what you make. Uh, I'm really proud of this tool, and it uh, should be exciting. So, this is a quick start. I just want to cover kind of the basics of what it can do in like 10 minutes. Um, I assume you've already watched the install video. you got it all working properly, so let's jump right on in. So, I'm going to create by eh, doing, making something a little different. Any object with any parameters will work. So, I'm going to create a helix, because why not? And uh, I'm going to maybe lay it flat on the ground on, oops, sorry, I keep clicking the wrong one. Okay, so we got the helix, nothing too exciting. Um, I'm going to right click on our helix and down at the bottom of our uh, different tags here, you'll find signal. So you click on signal and by default, right away, you're gonna notice it's got an icon that's a question mark and that's because we haven't told it what parameter it's driving yet. So what parameter do we want it to drive? Well, let's start out real basic. I'm gonna go to our coordinates tab and I'm gonna grab Y, the Y position. I'm gonna drag it up and drop it on the question mark. And the question mark is gonna change to a P for position. That's a big P so you can tell the difference. And now we can click on that and we can go to our base tab and take a look at these parameters. Now by default, uh, we already have position zero. So this is set to go from zero to zero. So no animation at all. But let's say we want this to go from zero to 200 on the Y position. Right away, it's gonna jump up to 200 on the end. But that's because our time spline by default is maxed out. If I hit play, you won't see any animation. But all we have to do is grab this first point of the spline and drag it down. And now it's transitioning over time from zero to 200 and that is over the time of zero to 90. So that's the basic, basic, basic functionality of signal, is you transition a parameter from one state to another state over a given time. And you control that through a spline. So uh, we can change this to any number. This could be say negative 200 to 200. So now it's gonna start below and then travel upward. And we can control the spline. I can drag this up so it's really sharp. So now at the beginning, it's going to accelerate really quick and then slow down. And hit undo. Let's go back to zero to 200. And now right now it's traveling from zero to 90, but we can have that go to maybe zero to 45. So now it's gonna go up to 45 and then stop. Now, uh, one other important thing to note here is that we, right now our playback is set to happen once. So from zero to 45, this is transitioning through the animation and then it doesn't move, but we have different modes that are really fun. Uh, I'm gonna go even faster so we can see it better. So I'm gonna set that to like 20. So now it plays through over the course of 20 frames, but I can set that instead of once, I can set that to loop. So now every 20 frames, it begins again. It jumps to the bottom and then plays through the animation again. So depending on what's happening, that you know that's a good way of getting a, an animation forever. And if we set this up to a really long time, like 900, like this will actually keep playing forever and never stop. The next mode I really like is ping pong. And turn on ping pong, what's going to happen? It's going to travel from at one end of the spline over the course of 20 frames. And then over the next 20 frames, it's going to travel back down it. So we get a perfect looping animation that goes back to the beginning. And so, that, you know, that one's really fun. And then next, uh, I'm going to make this a little more extreme. I'm going to grab both handles and then pull them out. I'll grab the bottom one, actually. Pull that out. And the last playback mode is additive mode. And I really like this one. What this one does is over the course of 0 to 20 frames, it's going to travel upward. But then when it reaches the end of the animation, it's going to continue. It's going to do it again, but from the position that stopped at. So this will just keep moving upward. So for instance, let's say we wanted this moving at a constant rate. I can grab this spline, grab both points by hitting Command A in the window. And I'm gonna go spline point linear. So now it's a linear motion. So now what's gonna happen is this will just keep traveling upward at a constant rate and never stop. That could be spinning for instance, and it would never stop. So I'm gonna delete that signal tag and let's create another one from scratch. Signal, uh, what do we wanna drive this time? Well, instead of, uh, instead of Y position, why don't we grab maybe the end angle? So this time we're dealing with degrees. So I drop that on, you'll see that the icon changes to a sine wave with a little E on it. That's to say that we're on the end angle. And click on that icon now, and you see it's, because it already had an end rotation of 720, you'll see that it's set to zero to 720. I'm gonna grab this point, pull it down, and now, actually let's drop this timeline back down to 90. because we only, now over from zero to 90, we're traveling 720 degrees around. So that's all well and good. Um, so yeah, any parameter can be dragged in, but let's move on. Gotta keep this moving. So uh, next up, modifiers. I'm gonna create a cube and let's right click on the cube and drop a signal. Now, instead of applying signal to a single parameter, we can actually apply it to a vector. So if I go to 
our coordinates, I can grab our position, the P for X, Y, and Z, and drop it on there. And now it changes to a P for the position. And now we can have it travel on all three of these. So for instance, uh, in our base tab, it's going from zero to zero because that's the way we set it up. But we can have this maybe move up 200 and have it move over, let's say 1000 on X. Oop, 1000, thank you very much. So now, and then I pull the spline down, and now you'll see that it'll travel up and over the amount that we specified over the time. So we can actually travel on all of those vectors. Well, uh, through uh, all three parts of the vector. But I'm going to undo a few times to zero that back out again. Let's talk about modifiers. So add modifiers is here at the top of the base tab. So I'm going to jump right to the really fun one, which is noise. So I'm going to click on noise, and now... If we go to our noise tab right now, it's uh, all new parameters. This was dynamically created. You can make as many of these as you want. Um, but what we have is variation. So we have X, Y, and Z. So I can add, let's say, put like 500. I'm going to put 555 five, five, because it's fast to type. I'm going to hit play. And now our cube is randomly moving up to 555 in the positive and another 555 in the negative. And that's traveling around based on noise. Um, so there's a bunch of really cool parameters here, like loop point. Right now it's set to zero. And when you're in noise and you set it to zero, it will never loop. It'll loop forever. It'll just keep going. Uh, but we can set that to, say, 90 frames. And now when it reaches the end of the animation, it's actually at, at the exact same spot that it began. So you can get looping animations really easily. Actually, to get a looping animation, you just get rid of a keyframe or increase this to one. That way it's actually the frame after, so they match beginning to end. But anyway... Um, so you can loop there, but we could loop faster too. I can go to 25, and now you, now we're going to see that same animation happen a bunch of times within our timeline because every 25 frames, it's looping again. We've got random seed, so we can uh, keep changing our random seed so it applies. In fact, we take this cube, copy it a couple times, and grab all of them. And if I go to each one and put a different random seed, then they'll each get their own completely unique motion. I'm going to delete all but one. Okay, what else do we have? We have like the speed. We can have it go twice as fast and it gets all jittery. We can go really slow, like 0.1, and start traveling slowly. Um, but one thing, uh, another thing to point out now that's really cool is our feedback down here. This feedback is giving us a live visual representation of the different amounts that the parameter's outputting. So you can see that this is, this is nice and random, but it's never getting terribly close to the edge, and that's by the nature of a noise. Like, it, it tends to be in between the extremes. But we have a bias... Uh, setting right here. And as you increase the bias, and that goes up to 100%, it's going to start pushing these closer to the edge. So you spend less time in the middle and they're more likely to get to these extremes. I'm going to set our loop back up to 90 because that's getting a little uh, obnoxious. Uh, so now if I crank our bias all the way up to 100, you, you can see from our, our chart here and the way it looks on the screen is it's spending a lot of time at the extremes. So something else to note really quick. I'm going to drop this down to a nice slow speeds and let's drop the bias way down again to zero. And now, that's too slow maybe. Let's go to 0.3. So you see we get this nice slow moving cube. But we can actually go back to our base tab and add another modifier on top of it. So let's add a second noise. So now we get another tab called noise two. So let's have this one set to one, 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 one. And I'm going to set this up to go really fast, like five. So now what you see is we have, this one has less motion. And then we have this one, which has more motion. In fact, let's add even more. I'm going to add a one in front. So you see we get this nice slow motion where that one's moving around. And then we get this quick jitter that's layered on top of it. So for instance, if in this noise tab, I drag our strength at the top down to zero. You'll see there's our jitter. That's a crazy jittery one. I'm going to drag that back up, go to our noise tab, the noise two. And you can see that here, it's going really fast. But I can drag that down and you see... This, it's not being applied, you get this nice smooth big animation. So we add the two of them together and we get a smooth cube moving around in a jittery fashion. So you can layer things up like that. Um, so that's, that's where signal starts getting really powerful is being able to create random variation on top of it. Uh, okay, this is starting to get long already, so uh, how do we do this really quick? Um, so you can add as many of those as you want. Uh, Important, I'm going to hit undo because I want to show on this one. So this is moving around. If we go to our output tab, you can get feedback from all of our different layers and see how they're added together up in the master tab where you see all of them added. And then uh, down here, you'd see a keyframe drop down. You can open that up and I can hit convert to keyframes and it will actually convert our entire animation to keyframes. Signal turns off entirely. You see nothing's being calculated here. And now you could put this into a, like any kind of a, any kind of offset. Oh, you could put this into a, uh, what do you call it? When you go to a timeline modify, you can put this into a 
cloner and do time offsets now. You can send it to somebody who doesn't have signal. Um, super useful uh, to bake things out. And then to make it work again, I hit clear keyframes, and you won't even see it jump because it just continues ex as if, you know, like signal's still matching that perfectly. Okay, so that's baking. Uh, that's layering stuff up. Uh, okay, last last two things. Uh, you don't have to just apply this to objects. We can apply this to any parameter that can be keyframed in cinema. So I'm going to create maybe a sphere and let's create a circle. And now I'm going to, on the sphere, I'm going to right click and create a cinema 4D tag for align the spline. So now it's align the spline. I'm going to drag the circle spline in there. So now the spot, the circle, the sphere is stuck to the circle. So if I go to the go to this uh, line of spine tag, I can increase the position and you'll see that our sphere will travel along the spine. Let's have Signal drive that. I'm going to right click, actually I'm going to drag it to zero because that's the default, just so you can see. I'm going to right click on the sphere, grab Signal, and now instead of going to the sphere's parameters, go to the tag's parameters. I'm going to grab Position, drop it on the Signal tag, and now it's P for the position, and now go to the Base tab, and I want this to travel from zero to 100 over 90 frames and that's the path it's going to take. I hit play and now you see it's automatically animating it around there. But we could say maybe speed this up to 25 and now it's only going to happen at the beginning but we set that to loop and now that's going to loop around again and again and again forever. So that's pretty fun. Um, so there's that. So that's applying it to a tag and then we can apply it to materials as well. So I'm going to create a material. So here we got our material. But we, we have to apply the tag somewhere. So I'm going to create a null. It can be anything, but I'll create a null. I'm going to create signal. And now we've got signal. It's all good. Uh, what do we want to drive? Well, I want to drive the color parameter. I'm going to grab color, drop it on signal. It's going to change to a C for color. And now if you click on the uh, signal tag, you'll see we got a little, a little link field which is showing what tag we have selected or shader or whatever it was uh, in this kind of setup. Same thing for Expresso nodes, actually. And we actually have this transition from black to, well, I guess it's light gray, but I can have it be anything. I can set it to maybe a uh, teal. So now as I drag our timeline, I guess I'll move this up so we can see it. As I drag my timeline, you see it's transitioning our color from one to the other. And what's super crazy and cool, we can actually make a noise tab for, no for colors. And if I hit play, um, you can see here that we got noise applied to color. That's crazy. It's super fun. Uh, okay, so I think... Oh, wait. Oh, dang. There's one last thing I really want to show you. So let's do it super fast. I'm going uh, to create a landscape just so we have something little to look at. What I do? Undo. Okay. Uh, move that to... I'm going to create a landscape. I'm going to hit T for scale. Scale it way up. I'm going to create a camera. So I'm going to link to our camera, and let's just move to a position here like that. And I'm going to record some keyframes. So at the time of zero, I want this to be our position and our rotation. I'm going to go to the end of the animation. I'm going to zoom way out. And let's uh, let's rotate our camera. Just move to this position. Record. So now, you know, just normal cinema. Like we're animating the position and rotation over time. Okay. Let's say, let's say like there's an explosion happening. Like our, we're, we are a spaceship flying away and there's an explosion happening on the planet and our camera is going to be shaking. We can add that on top of our animation by adding a signal tag to the camera. And what do we want to drive? Uh, let's drive the position. I'm going to grab the position, drop it on there. Position tag, all good. Now, instead of like, instead of, it being these numbers, I'm actually going to set that to zero, zero, zero. And that would actually zero us out, and it did. But if we turn off, right now we have a setting in here called ignore original keyframes. If I turn that off, uh, what's happening is this will add signal on top of keyframes. We're not ignoring them anymore. So now I could say add a noise on top of that, and let's set that back to one, 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 and I'm going to set the speed to two. Now when I hit play, our camera's moving, and it's the same animation that we had, but we get this motion on top of it. So I can set that even faster, like five. Now, so then I get this nice, harsh camera shake. And let's say, that okay, that's too much camera shake, so we can pull that down. So now there's just a little bit of that camera shake as we pull out. If we wanted to, we could keyframe the strength over time. So at the beginning, the explosion hasn't happened yet. Um, so it's not there. Go to the end. Animate the strength up. Record that. And now as we fly away, the camera's going to shake more and more and more. There's actually a parametric way to do that, but we'll do that in the advanced settings. We can't take too long doing all this stuff. Um, so yeah, you can add signal animations on top of base animations. So I think that will pretty much do it for the quick start. I hope you enjoy Signal. Uh, totally, you guys should share what you, uh, what you make with us. Uh, I'm really excited to see what everybody creates with it. So I will see you in the next video when we start digging a little deeper. Bye.